Another semester begins, and with it, LaSalle basketball teams find themselves right in the midst of their seasons. I'm Taylor Viles, and I'm thrilled to be back for my final semester hosting Laser Sports Update, breaking down laser accomplishments on the field, on the turf, and on the court. Before we begin, there are a few key personnel changes in the athletic department that took place over winter break that I should mention. First, the field hockey team named a new head coach after their longtime leader, Kate Connolly, became LaSalle's assistant athletic director. Jessica Pollan will take the reins after serving as the head coach of Dean College's field hockey and women's lacrosse teams. It is not her first time donning the blue and white, though, as she served as the assistant under Connolly during the 2018 season. After a disappointing exit in last season's playoffs, the women's lacrosse team parted ways with Al Eaton, who is only in his first season. In his place will come Brittany Wario, a 2014 LaSalle graduate. Wario will, will look to lead her team to a winning season this spring. As most Lasers know, Kent Sherrington, who is beloved by many here, left his position as LaSalle's Director of Athletic Communications. Trevor Wenners was hired to the position at the beginning of January, so look to welcome him to campus at future LaSalle games. Now let's dive in to some basketball. Over break, both teams were extremely busy. The men went 3-2 with huge wins against Emmanuel Jaywu and rival Albertus Magnus, whom they hadn't beaten in over five years. It was a bit of a revenge as Albertus Magnus was the devil that knocked them out of the GNAC playoffs in the last two years. The two losses came against Norwich and the number eight overall in the nation, you heard that right, St. Joseph's of Connecticut. The women's team went 1-2 and two over break, but that record doesn't show how hard the team actually played. Shorthanded in all three games, they fought until the end during each one. Their only win came against Norwich, that was at Norwich, while their two losses came against GNAC juggernaut Emmanuel, who consistently plays in the GNAC championship game, and Albertus Magnus. Now let's turn to the present day. This men's basketball program puts on the floor one of the most exciting teams we've seen in recent history. Checking in at 10 and five overall as of this filming, the team is working with a big three who have been playing together for years. Led by four-year laser Kevin Nunez and three-year veterans EJ Day and Kevin Vanderhorst, the team ceiling this season is high. Those three have combined to average just over 17 points so far this season. Both Nunez and Day have reached the thousand point plateau for their collegiate careers that happened earlier in the season and Vanderhorst is not so far behind. The secondary scoring though is what sets this team apart. First years Kareem Balhochit and Conan McCusker have been able to come off the bench and average 4.1 and 5.1 points respectively per game, allowing longtime head coach Aaron Galletta the chance to rest his stars. In their two most recent games, the Lasers trounced Colby Sawyer College 78-48 and then Elms 112-55. Yeah, you heard that right. The latter marked the team's high scoring game of the season. The team sits near the top of the GNAC with a 6-2 conference record. The women's basketball team got into action this past Saturday as they welcomed Riviere to LaSalle for the second meeting of the season and this one was an absolute thriller. LaSalle had the lead for almost all of regulation, but it was the fantastic play of likely GNAC Rookie of the Year, Lyric Grumblatt of the Raiders that tied the game to bring this one to over overtime. In fact, it was an incredible deep three-point shot that sent it to overtime in the dying seconds. In the overtime period, the Lasers dominated the Raiders, outscoring them 22-5 to to win by 15. Four lasers scored in double figures. In their next game at St. Joseph's of Connecticut, the team was slow out of the gate, which they couldn't recover from. Trailing big after three quarters, the lasers fought back hard to draw it to within five, but they used up too much energy in that comeback and could not complete it, falling 62 to 53. Juju Neely led the lasers with 20 points in this one, including 11 in that fourth quarter to help with the comeback. 
The next game again is against the Regis Pride on Wednesday, which will tip off after this filming. Although the season is still young, the men's volleyball team has been playing and they improved their record to 2-4 overall at the SUNY Poly Invitational this past weekend. After finding their groove and working on eliminating the many service errors that we've seen in their previous losses against St. John Fisher and Nazareth, the Lasers were able to find their first wins against Wells and Elmira. Juniors Brendan Joyce and Tucker Merritt, as well as first years Jordan Shinot and Theo Zaharowitz, consistently led the team in kills during the four matches they played during the tournament. Merritt held the match high against Wells with 13 kills, and Zaharowitz and Shinot each had nine against Elmira. There were a lot of players to pick during this week for our laser focus, but our focus is going to turn on grad student Kevin Vanderhorst and first year Jasmine DePina of the men's and women's basketball programs, respectively. Vanderhorst has been on a rebound tear lately. After breaking the single game record for his team for rebounds with 27 during this past Saturday's game against Colby Sawyer, Vanderhorst almost broke that record just two days later when he pulled down 26 on Monday night against Elms College. DePina, on the other hand, also broke the school record for rebounds for her team. She also grabbed 27, and it happened only a couple hours before Vanderhorst's accomplishment. All in all, a pretty successful Saturday for the Lasers on all accounts. I was able to sit down with Vanderhorst to talk about his rebounding ability and his team's success. I'm here with uh, Kevin Vanderhorst, captain of the men's basketball team. Uh, Kevin, you're, uh, you're really tall. You, you pull down a lot of rebounds. Uh, why are you able to really grab so many rebounds this season? Is it, is it your height or is it just the positioning on nah, your Not really, man. Since, uh, since high school, actually, middle school, actually. Um, my coaches taught me, my middle school coach taught me that it's not about height, it's not about um, how high you, you jump, it's just pretty much just go hard after every single rebound. So that's trying to, pretty much what I'm trying to do. And then um, this past few games with um, Johnny Freiberg being out, I knew I had to step it up a little bit more and, you know, go get um, a little, <laughs> a few more. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much just go hard um, after every single rebound. Um, once I see the, the, the shot go up, I just try to position myself so I'm able to get the rebound. I mean, you said a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, like, like, it's not uncommon to see a rebound total like around 15, right? Like, Correct, like th yeah. that, that seems pretty, pretty normal. <laughs> but then we see like the last two games, and you, you know you came within two of breaking your record. Yeah. And, and obviously, if it had been a blowout, your coach probably would have left you in there. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, just like how does it feel to to have that total for LaSalle now to, to just being able to continue getting those? Yeah, it's definitely something that feels good. Um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, our main goal personally and as a team is just to win a championship. So mm -hmm. uh, whatever the team needs me to do, um, trust me, I'll be there doing it. Yeah. You, you knew it, though, in that 27 rebound. Yeah, the, the right? crowd was telling me, a few <laughs> people in the crowd, my teammates were telling me. So. Uh, yeah, that was, that was fun, actually. That was fun. Compared to like the last few seasons, mm -hmm. like th this team seems to be just clicking on all on on all levels. I've talked about like you got the big three now between yeah. EJ yourself and uh, Nunez. Uh, just just what's working with the team this season? Uh, believe it or not, it's more um, off the court. We're just clicking. We like each other. Um, we all um, happy to be around each other. The locker room is always fun. Everybody's always smiling, joking around, and um, that translates into the court. Um, Coach Galetta is always preparing our, um, the team to go out there and um, compete, uh, and that's why we're having success. Yeah, chemistry, that's what it's all about. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, believe it or not. Awesome, thanks so much, man. Absolutely, man, no problem. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Laser Sports Update. I will see you right back here next week for more. I'm Taylor Viles, and as always, go Lasers.